My name is Ruby. Today I'll be showing you how to use the Epson SureColor S4600 here at Make Haven. The first thing we're going to do before anything is we're going to put gloves on. Um, this is because the printer is so sensitive to dust if it comes in contact with it and of course it does because we're in a maker space um, it can be prone to clogs and it could dry out the ink a whole number of issues we have this cover as an extra layer of protection against the dust we're going to take it off by pulling this rope here we're going to tie this off here on this hook So next, we're actually gonna turn on the printer. And we do that by pressing this button here for about two seconds. You'll see this blue light turn on, the screen will turn on. Give it a few minutes to get itself together. While that's going on, we're gonna shake up these inks. We're gonna, we're gonna do that by lifting up this lever. This light will turn on. Do that for each of them. We're gonna very carefully take it out be mindful not to touch this end because it's very sensitive. We're gonna shake it for about 15 seconds. All right, push the lever down. And do that for each of them. So this ink is actually um, solvent-based ink. The difference between that and inkjet really for just for your sake, all that means is when you finish printing at the end, it needs a few minutes to fully cure and dry. Um, to the touch, right when it finishes printing is gonna be tacky. Um, so that's why after you finish printing, um, you wanna leave it on this bed. It's gonna heat up, it's gonna get quite hot, so just be mindful about that. Um, give it a few minutes and then it should be okay to touch with your hands. So after the machine's on, you have your gloves on, you just wanna give this a quick wipe down and it'll help with the dust a lot. There are even air filters here that we change periodically, but this helps so that there's not so much dust attacking the machine. Lift this up very carefully with a microfiber cloth. Just go all the way across. And this helps so no dust uh, sticks to your job once it's printing. Now that that's all set, we're gonna head to the back and load in some paper so we can run something called a nozzle check. Before you print anything, you wanna print a nozzle check, which is basically a test or a print preview of how your job will actually look like. This matters because, I'll show you. A nozzle check gives an indication of how uh, your print will come out. So if you have something that's five feet wide, and let's say here, this needs a light cleaning. You can see that by just that missing dot right there, it's a little hard to see. Um, just that missing dot looks okay here, but imagine if it was a five foot wide banner. You'd have way more inconsistencies, way more imperfections. And uh, the reason why this can like look imperfect sometimes is because it, the nozzle heads come in contact with dust. Before we had this plastic cover, and before people really started to understand that they needed to use gloves, this is what we were dealing with each time we would run a nozzle check. So uh, with each nozzle check that was looking like this, we would have to run a more intensive cleaning, which also requires a lot of uh, ink to be pushed through, meaning like we would waste a lot of ink. So that's why wearing gloves and keeping this cover on at all times if you're not using it is really, really important. So. Let's head to the back and we'll start loading in some paper. We're gonna lift these up. And so there's two systems of how the paper is held down. One are these clamps. Remove them by pushing these two buttons all the way to the ends. We'll make sure this one's number two. And the second are, are these uh, rollers here. And the way we move these up and down is by uh, moving this lever here. It's a bit sensitive, so just be careful not to slam it. Keep that up in the up position so that these rollers stay up. And now we're ready to push our paper through the machine. So we have a number of different papers available here at Makehaven. All of these are for sale on the website. And what you would be paying for is uh, the linear inch, just like vinyl, 
um, the linear inch meaning this way, not, not the width. Um, and all that information is available on the equipment page of the large format printer. Um, so for a nozzle check, I recommend using scrap paper only because you'll be paying for each uh, linear inch. So saving yourself a bit of money um, is always a great idea. Um, all of the scrap paper available is here. And the parameters required, like just try to keep it at least a foot and a half, two feet wide, and at least three feet long. Um, so this should be passable. Um, let me see. I try to clean it periodically, so just, just remember that the wider it is, the longer it is, the better. Um, so, let's head over here. So here is where we'll actually, in a second, load in our roller. Um, for regular scrap paper, all you need to do is push it through this insert here, and then push the lever down so that your paper is being held down by the rollers. So, don't worry about it being perfectly straight, because we could always adjust that after we get back to the front. So with both hands, just very lightly push it through. About a foot, a foot and a half is fine. We're gonna push this lever down. And now we're gonna head back to the front. So now that our paper is through the machine, all we need to do now is eyeball it so that it's mostly straight to the eye. Uh, this is because the printer, once it realizes that it has paper in the machine, is going to naturally adjust itself by a few millimeters to ensure it's straight in the way that it wants to be. Um, so we're going to lift the lever. And I know it's kind of not intuitive, but what I like to do is I like to align this clamp to, you see this edge here? Align this edge here. Okay, and now I'm going to just eyeball it so that this line can be straight with this line. And it's okay if it's not perfect, because again, we have some wiggle room. Now I'm gonna push this down. And now uh, that the rollers are down, I can let go of the paper and I can adjust these two clamps to be on top of the paper. Um, so let's move this, hold these two buttons down and carefully move it across. And the amount of space that we want so there are these two holes here. We want just enough paper so that it covers half of that. So what I mean by that is this. We want half moons on these clamps. So that gives it just enough space so that if it's too crooked, it can really just get itself to the, to the right position. So we're gonna do that to the same side over here. Bring those clamps slightly over the paper. Okay. It is really sensitive, so at some point, like, you don't even have to push these buttons. You could just move it with your finger. Okay, and that's about the amount of space that you want between your clamp and your paper. Okay, so now that that's set, we're gonna bring this down. And now the printer is gonna prompt us to choose what type of paper we have. Um, and other settings. So the first thing it's going to ask us is to select media and in this case this is the Epson poster paper so we're just going to go down the list. Let's see Arlon, we got Epson, Epson satin, this is Epson poster. Since this is scrap don't worry about if the size is wrong um, because it's it'll it'll be okay in this case for a nozzle check. Printable side is always out. This reference the, the way that we install the roll on the back of the printer for these purposes at Makehaven, I only recommend uh, installing it printable side out, and I'll show you what that means in a second. Length is always off because uh, it's not necessary in this case. So keep it off. And now we wait a few minutes for it to adjust itself. The paper's gonna move down, the paper's gonna move back in. Uh, let it do its thing. Um, if for any reason you see the paper starting to skew way too much, if it starts crinkling, or if, it, if, you, if you think you're gonna get a paper jam, all you have to do is hit this pause button. So if we hit that, for example, it's going to stop the machine and let you readjust pretty much. The printer accepted the way that we installed our paper, it readjusted our, itself. So now the last thing we're gonna do before we print our nozzle check is just lift this cover up 
and check on these half moons. So you see how it adjusted itself? These half moons are now more like full moons and this one doesn't have really any at all. So all we're gonna do now is just slightly adjust it so that we're back at those half moons. It doesn't have to be totally perfect, but we wanna be close. This is a little bit much. So now it'll be consistent all the way around. Um, and this is, of course, more likely if your paper is cut straight. Um, if it's not cut straight, then it won't be as, you know, perfect. And you might want to think about um, tearing off that edge. So I'm going to bring this down. Um, now, if you see, if I hold this button down, the paper's going to come down. If I hold the button up, it's going to go back up. When you're printing a nozzle check, just be mindful of what's already on the paper. Um, of course, my recommendation, if your paper is new and clean, it doesn't have too much on it, is to bring your paper up to this ridge, nozzle check or job, uh, because it's a good practice to have because when you're paying for paper, um, the printer actually prints back here. So these say five inches or so, you're still unfortunately have to, you're gonna have to pay for it still. Um, which is fine, but the way to save a bit of money is to just bring your paper up to this ridge here. So, we're ready to run a nozzle check. The way to do that is we go over to menu. This is our start page, menu. We're gonna go over to maintenance and then nozzle check. And then hit okay and it's gonna print. Here you'll also see the temperatures of the bed, the front, center, and back. Um, it gets quite hot, so just be mindful about that. And then the levels of the ink, and then uh, there's the wiper fluid, and then there's the ink waste. Each time it prints anything, there is ink that is just not used and just thrown out. And that's located down here. Um, I change this about once a month. If there is a warning label, or if there's something on the printer that tells you like maintenance required, just send a facilitator or me uh, a message on Slack. Uh, and we'll take care of it. So the nozzle check is done. We're gonna hold this down button to see what it what it is. Um, and today is the sixth, no, the twenty-first. Today is the twenty-first. That's how we can differentiate which nozzle check is ours. And we're gonna take a look here, um, date, time, serial number, all that stuff. But here, if we look through. It looks okay, except for M1. So this nozzle head has just a tiny bit of dust that we need to clear through. So uh, the way to do that is to run a cleaning. Uh, we go over to menu. We go over to maintenance once again. And then we go over to cleaning. Okay, and there's light, medium, and heavy. In this case, since it's just one piece, we're gonna hit light. All nozzles, please wait. That'll take maybe three to five minutes, and after that, you can run another, another nozzle check and you should be good to go. Okay, so if the nozzle check isn't great, we ran a cleaning, right? And now it's gonna bring you another prompt that says run another nozzle check. These are all of the ink levels. If for any reason there is a warning label on any of them, that means it's low, just send me a message on Slack and I'll change it out. These are located in the facilitator closet. Follow that process of the additional cleaning, run another nozzle check, and you should be good to go. Um, if not, run an additional cleaning. Instead of light, go medium. If medium, go heavy. So let's say you ran a nozzle cleaning, it still doesn't work, you did a light, you did a medium, you even did a heavy. If you still are having inconsistencies, what you can do now is run an intensive cleaning. So the way to do that is to go over to menu, go down to maintenance again, and instead of cleaning, we're gonna do head maintenance. Hit okay, auto head maintenance. It'll take about an additional five minutes and it's just a super intensive cleaning that should clear everything out. If for some reason this still doesn't work, I would contact me uh, via Slack at Ruby or another facilitator. Now that we did our nozzle check, we're gonna take this paper out and we're gonna learn how to uh, install a roll of paper. So to, the way to take paper out is to first move these clamps out of the way, hold this paper down, push this lever up, and feed it back backwards. In most cases, you don't really wanna push, pull it out this way. Push that lever back down, and let's head to the other side. Hold this down, be careful this gets hot. 
lift this lever up and carefully remove this out. So I like to roll these up. And since there's a lot of real estate left, I like to just put it back in the free box that we got. So we have nine different rolls of paper available at Maycaven. Uh, as I said, all of these are available for sale uh, on the Maycaven equipment page website for the large format printer. Um, and I'm just going to go through very quickly about each roll of paper and what it's typically used for uh, by members here at Maycaven. The first, we have a banner. The brand is called Key Banner, and it's actually this one right here. It has a, a, a bit of texture to it, and it's great for outdoor use. The color quality is simply like honestly really good <laughs> so we have a matte and we have a, a glossy like glossy shiny paper um, to tell what kind of paper it is it'll either be listed in the bag or it's listed all the way at the bottom here so uh, the height the type of material it is and the brand which we'll need to know when we're using our software so it's again either on the bag itself or at the bottom of the roll um, the next we have is our craft paper. This isn't approved to be used by the Epson printer, but I recommend this to be used only for like very simple designs, black and white outlines. Um, a lot of textile artists actually love to use this to print out like a pattern. Uh, let's say they wanna sew a jacket from scratch. You have your jacket outline, you have all your pieces. It's very simple and it won't even like jam in the machine. So anything simple, this is what you wanna use. The next we have our canvas paper, which we're out of right now. It's really popular. Um, it's uh, from Epson and it's great color quality. It's honestly like one of those canvas prints that you would get at CVS. Um, it's honestly the same type of quality, if not better. Um, the saturation is great and you don't need too much editing in advance. Next we have our Epson poster paper. This, po this paper is great for posters, anything that isn't too uh, colorful. It's a great matte paper, so I recommend like black and white designs and uh, banners and like, you know, protest posters and things like that. Um, it's super smooth and it's super flat. Next, we have our vinyl paper. This is at 54 inches wide. And again, information is located at the bottom. And what this is, let me show you, it's virtually the same thing as our vinyl paper available across the across the room. It's a big sticker um, and the color quality again is also pretty great. It takes color really well. It's very saturated and it's very bright. Um, it takes black and white uh, as well, very well. Um, so see, sticker here, Arlon is the brand and I won't try to separate it because I have gloves on, but it's great. The last papers that we have available are uh, the same type of vinyl, uh, except shorter, and one is glossy, and then one is matte. So even when you're handling paper, it's important to wear gloves, because if you don't, if you touch the paper without gloves on, your print will have handprints. Um, the oils in your hands will soak into your paper. Yes, it's that sensitive. And on your job, you'll see your fingerprints in a slightly different color. It's really obnoxious, and unfortunately, is why we're extra careful in wearing gloves. So now I'm gonna show you how to load in a roll. We're gonna use this key banner, matte paper. It says it's 30 inches tall. We're gonna carefully lift it, twist it back in so it's not so loose, with gloves on. I'm gonna grab it from the bottom. And we'll lift up. These get pretty heavy, so don't be afraid to ask for help if you need it. We're gonna carefully put it down here. And the first thing we're gonna do is gonna make sure that these two roll holders are in between the this bed. So this edge to this edge here should be inside this space. So this is good. We're gonna check to make sure this is locked. The way to do that is to see if you have threading here. If you have threading, just twist it slightly. Make sure it's nice and tight. I'm gonna check on the other side. I'm gonna make sure this one is loose because this is the one we're gonna have to adjust. So if you see you have threading here, you should be able to just, yep, threading there. Push it and it's loose. That's what you want. Um, so very carefully, we're gonna lift this up 
And if you can't lift it, you're more than welcome to use these. They're really helpful. Okay, I'm gonna lift here. I'm gonna push it in on one side. I'm gonna hold it with the other. And very carefully, you're gonna move this here. So after that, we're gonna hold this and we're gonna push it. You see this blue piece here? It needs to be flush. And what I mean by that is that. You should not be seeing any blue piece showing. So now we're gonna tighten it by turning this knob. Once we can't move it anymore, we can let go. And now we wanna move this lever um, so that this threading is like halfway gone. Twist it a few times. And the more you do this, the, the better idea you'll have for uh, what you want. What we're looking for in, in doing this specific motion is we want the right amount of tension so that the printer is aware that there's a paper roll in the machine. So I know you, I, I know you can't like feel this with me, but if it's too easy to, put, to pull, you want a little bit more. So right now it's like almost perfect and it's okay if you run out of threading, totally fine. What you don't want is you need more tension and you don't have any threading. So when you start, make sure you have some threading there. So I'm gonna check again. Seems a, that seems a lot better. So we're gonna roll with it. So now we're ready to load in a roll. We moved our clamps out of the way in the front. The lever is up here. And now we're gonna carefully push it through. About two to three feet is fine. It doesn't need to be perfect because we're gonna adjust in a second. Okay. Push this lever down and let's check it out in the front. So now we're at the front. Our paper is coming through. We're gonna carefully hold on to this. We're gonna lift this lever back up that moves the rollers. And we're gonna very carefully, lightly tug it through. Bring it down. Let's take a step back and just look at it. So now that we can take a look at it, stepping a few feet back, we can tell it's slightly off. And again, let's use these clamps, as I mentioned, as a guide. So this is slightly crooked. It's okay if you can't see that well. With practice, you'll see better. Okay, I'm gonna bring this down. And now we're ready for those half moons again. Bring your paper over slightly. And make sure when you're loading in a paper that it goes past this line here. Past this line is where you want it because it's gonna push itself back and come forward. You don't want it to get, uh, lose too much of this clamp here. So that's why here's perfect. All right, we got some half moons here. Let's check the other side. Move this over. Okay, now we're ready. The lever is down, the clamps are on. We're gonna bring this case back down. I'm gonna choose our paper once again. This paper is the Key Banner Matte. So we're gonna look for that now. Key Banner Matte, 30 inches, hit okay. Printable side always out, and that references the way that we just installed our roll of paper. Always do that, don't do in, just make it easy for yourself. Printable side out, length always off. We'll give that a, a minute or two. So the paper's gonna move itself up and down. The print head actually is gonna move across just to make sure that it's within the parameters of the thickness. It's very particular about it. If your paper happens to be too thick, which in our case of the papers that Makehaven provides, it's, it's everything is fine because we checked beforehand. Um, if it's too thick, it's actually not even gonna go on top of your paper. It's just gonna stop at the edge and slam, which is unfortunate, but it's scarier than it sounds. So now that our paper is all set, ready to go, the last thing you wanna do, since we already set our nozzle check and we're good to print our job, we're gonna hold this button down and we're gonna bring our paper up to this ridge here. Right here. And after that, you're all set. You're ready to start printing. So this is the computer where we send our files to print. I'm gonna sign in here um, and the the software is on the desktop. It's called RipQ here. 
and I only recommend you use this software to just send your files to print. You shouldn't really be doing any editing, any resizing, because it's so temperamental, and we got it for free from Epson, that it, it's a bit too volatile to be as reliable as you would hope it is. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do once you open up this RIPQ software is to check and make sure that this button is green. And what that means is that it, the computer is connected to the printer. If for whatever reason it's red, all you'd have to do really is just click on that button. The next thing you wanna do before you even load in your file is to set your current media and page size. So right now, it says it's an Epson paper, it's backlight film. This is the transparent paper and it's set to 30 inches. Um, we may likely not be using this paper. So to change it, we're gonna hit this gear here. We're gonna go over to the media group and let's say we're using the Arlon banner. We're gonna go over to Arlon. We're gonna go over and click the media type. In this case, there's only one. In other cases, like for Epson, there's more papers available. Canvas Gross is the uh, uh, canvas paper, the literal canvas, raw canvas paper. The Canvas Satin is the photo paper. The Display Trans Backlight Film is the transparent paper. And the poster paper is the poster paper. So in this case, we're doing Arlon Banner, Arlon DPF, and our roll size is 30 inches. Hit 30 here. Okay, we're going to watch that change. Okay, placement really matters when uh, you're doing more than one job. Um, in this case, since we're only doing one, it doesn't really matter. But if you had, you know, one or two more images or, or jobs that you want to print and you want to save some money, I always recommend that you group jobs together or you conserve media. Uh, print jobs individually, what that will do is um, print your file and then move your paper about five inches and then print your next file. Um, I wouldn't recommend this because you'd save a lot more money setting your file in advance. So in Photoshop or in GIMP, uh, you have your file, you add your white space around it and then you, you, you send it as is there. Um, you can't really do that by printing jobs individually. It's just gonna print way more than necessary. Um, so we'll do group jobs together. And now we're ready to load our file to print. Um, and we can do that by using the file bucket available at bucket.makehaven.com. I'll show you what that is in a second. Um, and lastly, I just wanna show you that anything you've ever printed will, will be saved onto the computer. You can obviously delete it if it's you know sensitive information or you don't want anyone else to use it. But in any case, if you happen to need to reprint anything, um, it will be saved onto this queue, which is super helpful. So now that we're ready to send our, our load up our file, we're gonna open up the internet browser and we're going to go to bucket.makehaven.org. Bucket.makehaven.org is a fantastic resource provided by Makehaven where it, you can access this link from any computer anywhere. So you could load up your file from home uh, drop your file here using your de home desktop computer, come to Makehaven, go to this link, and your file will be, where's mine? Here. Just click on it and download. Um, so this is just some cell phone photograph that I took of my work. Um, we're going to right click on it. We're going to save image as. And you want to save it to the desktop or to downloads. Click save. And now, we go back to RIPQ, we open up our file, or hit the hit the open button. Hit your file, hit open, and it'll start loading up here. Obviously, whatever you want your file size to be, you should set that up in advanced. I recommend Photoshop or GIMP. GIMP is like a photo software. It's, it's exactly like Photoshop, except it's free, and it's downloadable from any computer, really. Um, so here we have file size, the printer, the media size, print mode. Uh, if everything goes well, you'll get a print preview here. If, for example, the size is wrong, sometimes the computer just likes to make a joke. Um, you're gonna right click on this. You're gonna go to job properties. And let's say I actually wanted the height to be 20 inches. And I want 
wanted it rotated. This is about the most you can do of adjusting editing on the software. I wouldn't really recommend much more than that. Besides, you can also add edge marks or like indicators of where to cut. Um, so there's edge marks and then there's sewing marks. This one's fun because you get a preview of where it is. This is obviously on your job, so you'd have to move it left or right. Um, we don't want that though right now. Um, edge marks is fine. We hit OK. Thing looks good here. And it's going to reload itself, re-render. And if all goes well, you'll get a print preview and you'll be ready to go. Perfect. If for whatever reason it doesn't load, you're going to get a warning icon here. Uh, let's say for whatever reason this job size is way bigger than the allowed size. So this is 28. Let's say this is 29. Just want to show you what that would look like. So it's going to re-render one more time and because it's not, um, it's bigger than the allowed size, it won't give us a print preview at all. It'll actually say media error or something's wrong, like the size is too big. Okay, so it says wait for media size and we have no print preview. So that means that uh, it won't let you print anything at all because the parameters of it is too big. Let's say, for example, you need to use this paper and you need it to be at this size. The way to go about that would be to rotate your file so that, yeah, it can't print like this wide, but it can print if you, if you rotate it 90 degrees. Um, so that's what we'll do. 90 degrees here, hit OK. It'll re-render once more and you're good to go. If you run into any issues, I recommend referencing um, this cheat sheet here for the large format printer. It has basic instructions for the printer and the software. It also has a bit of troubleshooting questions that you can reference. Um, I'd also recommend looking at this handy dandy manual that lives on this cart for the printer. And then for the software itself, there is also a manual if you happen to need it. And these live on the cart here for the printer. All right, and now that you have a print preview, you're good to go. If for whatever reason you load in your file before you set your current median page size, you'll get an error message, um, in which case you can fix that by changing the current median page size here and right clicking here and going to job properties and changing it here as well. Um, but after that, you are all set to print. All you gotta do is hit print now. So once you finish printing, uh, leave your paper on the hotbed for about three to five minutes so that it can fully cure. Um, so the way to check for that is to just lightly press your thumb against the corner of your image to see if it's sticky or not. If it's sticky, leave it be and give it a few more minutes. Uh, once it's fully cured, you can take a box cutter um, and there is the slit that goes all the way across the printer here. It starts here and on the, it goes all the way across. Um, one hand on your paper, one hand in the slit, and you can just go all the way across. To unload this roll, we're going to do the same thing as last time. We're going to lift this cover up. We're going to move our clamps out of the way. And we're going to go to the back before we lift this lever since this will just fall right out. I'm gonna hold this paper down. I'm gonna lift this lever up that controls the rollers. I'm gonna carefully, with gloves on, load this back in. Okay. So now, we'll be, we'll be working backwards. We're gonna unwind this here. Make sure to keep one hand on your paper. Unwind it. You'll see this blue piece start to pop out again. And we're gonna unlock this knob here. Okay, and just be careful with this section. Push it off. There we go. Give me a hand here. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we got it off now. Um, and we're gonna carefully pull it off. Okay. Now we're gonna lift it, put it on the spike, and put the plastic bag over it so it can be protected.
So the last thing you're going to want to do is um, once it's come out, you need to measure the full length and that includes a little excess. Sorry about that, but that's how it rolls. Um, so you can get the amount that you need to pay. So this is the linear inch, it's what we charge by. So it looks like this one is going to be about 29 inches. Um, so I'll go to makehaven.org store, look up the canvas material and pay for 29 inches and you're all set.